if I were out there advocating for, say, democratic fascism, and I went, look, we need a fascist government, but it's got to be done democratically, and you were to bring up, you go, hey, you know, like, fascism was a real disaster when it was tried in the 20th century, and I'd be like, that's an outrageous thing to even ask me. I'm not, I have nothing to do with that type of fascism. Like, that would seem unfair. If you're advocating for this system that, when tried, led to this horrific, you know, like, really, really bad, and by the way, far worse than fascism was uh, socialism in oh, the 20th yeah. century, not even close. Um, so, you know, I mean, they were both bad, but far worse. Um, so you would think you'd have, but he just scoffs at you. However, Bernie Sanders praised like all of these horrific socialist regimes at the time. Oh, there's I the mean, clip. Like, I mean, you, we've, we, oh, we, yeah. I know we've both seen the clip of him praising breadlines. Praising breadlines. But he, it's not Anybody just Anybody like, who thinks he could win a general election. When there's a clip think, of you praising breadlines. Who doesn't think that that will be played literally everywhere. And also Donald Trump is particularly good. You're not just running against an average candidate. You're running against Donald Trump. Donald Trump will hit you over and every single day. He'll talk about mm -hmm. breadline Bernie. You know, there, I just came up with a nickname Boom. for Donald Trump. Like, it'll be that every single day. He'll make you think about it. And and in some ways, in this example, rightfully so. But but he... And it's a this seedless a rye. Who wants who, a seedless rye? <laughs> but this guy praised. I mean, not even just praised. He had his honeymoon in the Soviet Union in the 80s. Like, this isn't like the Soviet Union back when they could go, well, we didn't really know about the crimes. This is like a few years before the whole thing collapsed. He's like, they had this, these wonderful cultural centers and, and it's just saying great things about them. Went over there, praised Hugo Chavez, praised all the worst regimes. But if you were to ask him about any of that, he just scoffs like, you're Oh my God, what an idiot, what a dishonest like person you are that you'd even bring this up. You're not even allowed to bring it up. And then he'll just say, no, 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 because now he's pivoted. No, 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 it's not about any of these authoritarian regimes. It's about Scandinavia. That's what I'm saying we should have. But there's a reason why- But look why, at the rest of Europe. But the, but the Hijab president bans. Of, like, and I, look, whatever you want to say about what Muslims are doing, I don't believe you should ban hijabs. You know what I mean? It's a religious thing. You know, no, I agree. But even in the Scandinavian countries, there's the there's a reason why the president of Denmark came out and was like, "Hey, Bernie, we're not a socialist country. Stop lumping us in there with them." The, the, the Scandinavian countries are not that for a while. But in the eighties, didn't they have to let in more free market capitalism? I mean, nor doesn't Norway? Norway happens. has Norway's in a way more capitalist than us. Their government has a investment fund from all of the. Land that I mean, I guess yes. it's well, the land, what happened, which is socialist. But here's what happened more or less with the Scandinavian countries. And I know more about Sweden than I know about the other ones, but more or less. I mean they got like, the hot ones. And right? and they're they're yes. But Iceland's it's not got just the that. loose ones. Yeah, you got damn right. <laughs> uh but it's not it's not just more or less this is the trajectory of all of them. But from say eighteen fifty to nineteen fifty Sweden was one of the most free market countries in the world. Mm -hmm. They had lower tax rates than America did, very free markets, and they became a very rich country. In addition to that, they also avoided the two world wars while the rest of Europe profited was destroying the them. Wars. Well, maybe a little bit, but they didn't get in on fucking bombing the shit out of the... Of, you have to think a lot of these other countries actually destroyed themselves and rebuilt, destroyed themselves again and rebuilt. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of wasted, uh, you know, resources and in all of that. Yes. So they they stayed out of that. They're, they're almost, I mean, you could say from Sweden from 1850 to 1950 is like a Ron Paul success story. Free markets, stay out of wars, stay out of entangling alliances, just do your thing. And, you know, that, so they, they basically had that. And then the, um, the, the, democratic socialists started to rise in influence now it took them a while it wasn't really until the 70s that they started implementing their programs and as they did that their economic growth grinded down to a, a almost standstill i mean they went from growing like very rapidly to yeah. growing slower and so it's the old thing about how do you uh how do you get a small fortune you start with a big fortune and blow part of it it's like they started very very rich and they blew a big part of it on these demo and then once they by the 80s and 90s they started rolling back a bunch of these programs because they were like this is crazy it's not working and their economy started growing faster so what you have today are countries that rank fairly high in like the economic freedom index they're they're not there's very low regulation there's not a lot but they, they have rank the, better than this country 
Right now, I think we might have passed them, but they were ranking better than America mm-hmm. for a while. And I, I they, guarantee they rank better than a lot of states. The more, oh, absolutely. The more socialists, like they probably don't, maybe not overall. And that's Texas's economy is booming. You know yeah. what I mean? But like, I bet they rank better than like New York or mm. California. That's interesting. I've never even seen that compared, but yeah. I bet you you're right. Um, so they have the so they, what they have is small populations, a homogenous country, and they have certain sectors that the government pretty much runs. And for this, they pay sixty to seventy percent of what they make in taxes. Now, that's okay. You can make the argument or talk about it, but to just say we want democratic socialism because of these democratic socialist countries that aren't democratic socialist countries where it's like, hey, talk to the American people about that really. Now, you could say, um, hey, you know, you're going to pay a little bit more in taxes, Mr. I make 60K a year, but you're going to get more in healthcare. But if you actually said to them, hey, we're all for Sweden and Denmark and this, how do you feel about paying 70% of what you make in taxes? I don't think you're going to win elections on that. So Mr. Democratic Socialist, I don't think you can democratically win if you're honest about what you're you're talking about proposing. And then, of course, I really do think you should have to answer for the fact that it's like, yeah, dude, why is it? That you only have nice things to say about the most brutal authoritarian regimes all around the world. Why Why are you on record praising Castro? Like Chavez. he's some great guy. Hugo Chavez. What, you're, you're, you're having your honeymoon in the Soviet Union. Does that not seem a little bit weird? 